you. All right, thank you, Rachel. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Christina Baylor, and I serve as the audit manager for one of our local offices of the Office of the Washington State Auditor. Um, if I may, Rachel, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. There we go. Okay, so up on your screen, you should be able to uh, see our presentation materials. Um, please let me know if they're not showing up for any reason. Um, but before we go ahead and get started, I just wanted to open it up and just thank everyone for taking time out of their day to uh, attend our presentation on the draft results of Community Transit's fiscal year 2019 audit. Um, we take our responsibility as governmental auditors very seriously to, uh, to perform independent, transparent audits of governmental uh, use of public funds. And we do so uh, by doing regular audits of the community transit. And the purpose of today's meeting is really to share those results with you and take any questions before those results become finalized and uh, published on our website. And so um, before we move into the specific results, I'd like to introduce my team that's joining me today that will be assisting with the presentation of our um, audit results. Uh, with me today, I have Courtney Amundsen, who served as the assistant audit manager and supervised all of the work that went into the transits audit. Um, Courtney has had the opportunity to work with the transit over uh, many years and returned in this role this year uh, for the first time in a couple of years. So it was great to have her uh, experience back and uh, it was great for us to rotate her back into the cycle. Uh, we also have Ling Yoon Zhao on the line. Uh, Ling Yoon has uh, served in the capacity of the audit lead. So Ling really did all the legwork that went into planning, conducting, and performing the transits audit. Uh, Ling is with us today to also share the results. Um, I think it is beneficial to do um, some brief introductions on the transits end as well, just so that we uh, know who is joining us today. Uh, Rachel, would you be able to assist with that? Yes, yeah, so everyone's aware I'm going to call roll for the board, just so we're familiar with who's on the call. And then I'll also be reading through our attendance list here and calling out the staff members uh, whose names I see. Uh, so let me get started here with the board of directors. Uh, Council member Kim Daughtry, you're on the line, correct? Yes, that's correct. I'm here. Thank you. And council member Tom Merrill. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, do we have council member Nate Nearing? Uh, Mayor John Nearing? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Labor representative Lance Norton, I believe we have you. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, council member Jan Schwede, correct? Yes, I'm here. Uh, do we have Mayor Nicola Smith? Okay, and Council Member Mike Todd? Yes, I'm here, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have Council Member Stephanie Wright? Okay, thank you. And I believe I saw uh, Laura Johnson Board alternate join, is that correct? Yes, I'm here. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining, in, joining us. Um, I'll now go through and read uh, who we have present from Community Transit staff. Uh, so we have Jerry Beardsley. Uh, we have Emmett Heath, Deb Osborne, Mary Albert, Susie Scheidegger. We have Mary Beth Lowell. We have Cesar Portillo. Uh, let's see here. We also have Ula Johnson. Cheryl Mears, Kunjin Dale, Lori Fox, Catherine Rasmussen, and those, let's see here, those are the names I can see on screen. Was, did I miss anyone that wanted uh, to introduce themselves from the community transit staff? Okay, thank you. I think that, that completes our attendance for today. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, 
Um, to begin our presentation, I just wanted to go through um, just a couple housekeeping items. Um, as we have transitioned to this remote presentation uh, style where we are sharing our screen, um, we will be kind of navigating to, through our packet on the screen. Uh, this was formally done in person, so it's a little different this year, um, but please bear with us. We'll do our best to uh, go through the packet efficiently while uh, not causing any sort of motion sickness by scrolling fastly on the screen. Um, in addition, we found it very beneficial to um, take our questions at the end of our presentation. By all means, if you have something pressing, we'd be, of course, uh, happy to uh, take that during the presentation. But um, if you can, uh, please know that we will be holding a session to uh, share your questions at the end of our, our presentation. So to get started, I'd like to begin with this first uh, page that I'm sharing on the screen. As I mentioned, the purpose of today's meeting is to share our results, our draft results of Community Transit's fiscal year 2019 audit. We do a number of regular um, annual audits for the transit, and we have bulleted those here on the page for your reference. But I'd like to speak briefly about uh, the scope and the objectives of each audit. Again, the period is going to be calendar year 2019 for each audit. So the first audit that we did perform was what we call an accountability audit. So an accountability audit is really uh, looking at the transit's compliance with state laws, regulations, contracts, agreements, your own policies and procedures. And beyond compliance matters, we are just looking um, in general, does the transit have adequate safeguarding of public funds? Is there any risk that uh, public assets or funds could go missing or be misappropriated? Um, so that's what we're really looking for in accountability. Um, we also performed a financial statement and federal grant compliance audit. Those are two separate audits, uh, but we do package them in one report. Uh, and this is really uh, so that we can meet audit standards regarding uh, these, uh, these audits. That uh, when you have a federal grant compliance audit, they do also require a financial statement audit be performed at the same time. So those results are packaged together. Uh, for the financial statement audit in particular, uh, we do conduct this audit in accordance with governmental audit standards. So the purpose of this audit is really to issue an opinion on the transit's financial statements and whether they're free from material misstatement. The opinion is really important to the reader of your report as it lets them know that they can place reliance on the information that's included. For the federal grant compliance audit, uh, this is a type of audit that is uh, triggered or required, if you will, whenever a government expends over $750,000 in federal funds within one calendar year. Uh, the transit receives uh, quite a large amount of federal funding, so this is something we regularly perform um, each year. And we are looking to see whether or not the transit complied with the requirements of receiving those federal grant funds. Um, at the end of our audit, we do report our results back to the federal government so that they have, uh, they have those in hand and they receive those results directly. Um, related to our financial audit, we also uh, do additional procedures uh, which are called or associated with a comprehensive annual financial report. The transit has chosen and has chosen for quite some time to apply for an award program that's offered uh, from the uh, GFOA. And that award program does require that the transit prepare some supplemental information to its normal financial report package. Uh, we do take a look at that supplemental information so that the transit can apply for that award. And we have no doubt that the transit is in good position to um, continue to receive that award. And then lastly, we do two, two additional types of audits. Uh, we liken these to agreed upon procedures. They are um, associated with the transit's responsibility to have a national transit database or NTD review. Um, so for, this, uh, for these audits, we are taking a look at a specific re uh, requirements uh, that the transit must meet and issuing a letter to show whether or not they are in compliance and we'll be sharing those uh, reports with you as well. And before we move any further, we spend quite a bit of time uh, working with the transit staff on those various audits. And I know Ling has worked directly with many of you. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Ling for just a moment because she did have some highlights that she'd like to emphasize today. Let's 
And do we have Ling on the line with us today? Okay. In case she is not available, I'm not sure, I don't see her on the listing. I'll go ahead and um, speak on her behalf. So Ling did, um, did refer these, um, this, uh, these highlights directly to Courtney and myself. And so we really did want to share this with you. Uh, first of all, she really wanted to thank the transit for its flexibility and dedication to the audit process. Um, she specifically worked directly with the finance department who provided consistent support and timely turnaround for requests, questions, and general audit inquiries. In particular, Lori Fox, controller, and her team worked tirelessly to ensure the audit was completed on time and consistently provided us with audit documentation that was organized and easy to follow. And we also wanted to extend our appreciation to Katherine Rasmussen and Kanjan Dale for their assistance during the federal grant audit, um, as well as Cheryl Mayers for providing exceptional support during the attestation audit. So we recognize that this audit takes quite a bit of your staff's time in addition to their regular duties and um, we always note uh, that it's a great working experience with your staff and really appreciate all of the work they put into responding to our request. So thank you for that. Um, with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Courtney and she's going to walk you through our first draft report and this is our accountability audit report. Okay, thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. That first page is just a uh, just a cover page for our accountability report. So I'll go ahead and move on to um, the next page. And this is just a um, a letter from Auditor McCarthy, just speaking to the type of report that um, we'll be issuing here. Um, the next page is a just a table of contents um, of all of the items that are included in the accountability report. Um, but really the heart of the accountability report itself um, is on page number five, um, which Christina has right there. So Christina spoke about the accountability report itself um, and the type of audit that this includes. And it's you know, really looking at um, just the, the policies and the procedures and laws and regulations and the practices that are going on um, within the transit um, and whether or not you're in compliance with those items. And so um, at the beginning of the audit, we perform what we call planning procedures. Um, obviously, we don't have time to review everything during an audit. Um, otherwise, we would be there year round and that's a little crazy to think of. So, um, but we, we really think about and go through the planning procedures to look at what's happened over the course the year um, and what are the items that we want to focus in on that have either come up um, specific to the transit or there have been statewide themes that we want to focus on um, and so you can see on that page we've listed those I'll go through those in just a minute but that's kind of how we came to the areas that we focused on uh, this year so at the top of the page it talks about the results in brief um, and there's a highlighted section that is really just the overall summary of what you're going to see in this report that basically says we had no major your concerns um, with the areas that we performed our review over. So just as a, as a quick reminder of, uh, of, of kind of how our recommendations work, um, we have three reporting levels. The highest uh, is a finding. Um, we're happy to report that there's no findings uh, that we'll be reporting today, whether in the accountability report or uh, the financial report. So I'm kind of stepping on Christina's toes just a little bit because I'm taking over her report. But um, we also, the next level down is a management letter. This is something that if you were to receive one, it's referenced in the report, but it's not included in its entirety. Um, and, and I'm happy to report that we have uh, no management letter items to report for accountability as well. And then our lowest level, these are just exit items. These are what we call housekeeping items, just little things that we discuss, um, but don't need to rise to the level of uh, discussion during an exit conference. So um, during the accountability report, we have no um, findings or management letters to report whatsoever. So you're going to see that um, in here, which is wonderful news. So congratulations. Um, to go on a little bit further, just to kind of talk a little bit more about what exactly we looked at during the accountability audit, um, at the bottom of the page, there's the four bullet points. Um, so we took a look at um, accounts payable. Um, during that 
particular review, we actually did what we call a system review. And so we took a look at the overall process for basically how all of your payments with the exception of uh, payroll, um, how those are, are handled. So we looked at general disbursements and credit cards and travel expenditures and electronic funds transfers. Um, and we're pleased to report that we have no recommendations uh, for the, that process. Um, we found that the process was uh, the, the way that you are monitoring and ensuring uh, that the information is supported um, is, is what we're looking to see. So that's wonderful news. That's exactly what you want to see, especially with the amount of uh, funds that are being paid through that. It's really important to have strong uh, controls in place to make sure that um, the public, public funds are being monitored correctly, which is great. Um, the next area that we took a look at, um, you know, in every audit, we take a look at the Open Public Meetings Act and we take a look at um, the transits compliance. Um, but we did have a, a citizen concern that was brought to our attention at the beginning of the audit. And so we actually took um, a little bit a further review into this particular area, not only did we look at um, your regular meetings, but uh, the concern really focused around committee meetings and uh, whether or not they are um, need to be performed in accordance with the Open, Public's Me Open Public Meetings Act. Um, there's a lot of rules and, and requirements about, uh, you know, how meetings should be published and how uh, notes should be taken and, and um, you know, who needs to have um, access to those meetings. And so um, we really focused on kind of how the committee meetings are set up, um, what elected officials are involved in the committee meetings, and whether or not that really met the threshold of an open public meeting. So um, just for your, if you're not already aware, which I'm pretty sure everybody on this uh, call is, but an open public meeting, the Open Public Meeting Act, Meetings Act is really applicable to when there is a quorum of uh, board members so if there's the more than uh, majority is involved that would create a quorum and in that case then there will be additional requirements for what information needs to be published um, what kind of notes need to be taken um, how the meeting needs to be uh, advertised so that people can call into it and so i'm pleased to report we um, from looking at that review again we don't have any recommendations and in fact we actually look, found that um, the transit you know though you're not required to um, advertise or invite um, anybody as the same way you normally would in an open public meeting to a committee meeting um, we did note that the transit actually is going above and beyond it and and is including the agendas on your website and um, is starting to actually include some um, invitation information so that if the public wants to, to call in or be a part of those meetings, um, we did see that that is being included now in those agendas. So um, kudos to the transit for actually going a little bit above and beyond to be more transparent. Um, and then the other two areas that we look at, uh, we took a look at financial condition as well as uh, self-insurance. And those are areas that we take a look at pretty much every year in the case of self-insurance every two years as it's a required area for us to review. So that is really the focus of kind of how we spent our time on the accountability audit. But again, um, clean results and, and really what you want to see in this report. So. Uh, moving down to page six, um, this talks about the related reports. Um, Christina is going to talk about the financial and federal audit report, and then Ling is going to talk about uh, the work that we performed over the NTD um, review. So um, this just refers to the fact that we did some additional review in addition to accountability. And then the very last page of the accountability report, this is page seven. This is just talking about the transit itself and some information about the transit. Um, and we have sent this on uh, for Lori to review. So hopefully there isn't any major changes, but if there is anything that you see in there that is incorrect, please do let us know so we can make sure to update that before we submit and uh, process their report um, to be published. And then the very last page is just a brief summary about the auditor's office. So I'm going to go ahead and um, turn it over to Christina. She's going to talk about the financial and uh, federal compliance report. All right. Thank you, Courtney. Okay. So our second report that we would like to share uh, with the transit is our combined financial and federal single audit report. Um, as I mentioned, uh, these two audits are combined into one report. And so we'll walk through the results here. 
Uh, we do like to share before we get into this report that because uh, these reports are done in accordance with uh, governmental auditing standards and federal um, single audit standards, uh, there is a lot of technical language um, within this report and that is mandated by the standards. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you the key parts to take away from this report. We've gone ahead and highlighted them for today's meeting, um, but uh, just know that there is uh, a lot of standards driven uh, language in this report. So in accordance with conducting our financial statements audits in uh, accordance with governmental auditing standards, uh, we do have to do a number of procedures. So similar to the accountability report, you'll see an introductory letter uh, followed by, again, a table of contents. But the report is really split out into three sections. Uh, we have two sections on the financial audit and one section on the single audit. But the really great thing about this report is that there is a summary of the entire contents. So you'll see on page 12 of your packet, um, and this is going to be pretty close to the front of this report when it's published, is we have a, a section that's titled Schedule of Findings and Question Costs. The title is mandated by audit standards, but it does not mean what it says. It does not mean that you have findings and question costs being reported. This is just a mandated title uh, for the summary report. Um, in fact, uh, the audits that we're prepared to share with you today were clean audits. We have no findings or management letters. So don't be alarmed by the title of this summary page. Uh, what it will do is it will walk you through uh, the summary of the financial and the single audit. So the first section you'll see here is our financial statement summary. Uh, we are pleased to report what we call an unmodified opinion on the fair presentation of the transit's financial statements in accordance with governmental auditing standards. Um, so we um, did take a look at the transit's internal controls in expressing our opinion. So internal controls would be uh, the process that your transit staff go through to prepare the financial statements, the draft statements. Audit standards do require if looking at that process, if we identified any significant um, concerns with that process that could lead to uh, significant misstatements or material misstatements, uh, we would be required to share that with you. Um, you'll see under the heading internal control over financial reporting that we did not identify any concerns that rose to the level of a significant deficiency or material weakness that are required to be reported as an audit finding. And now later on, we do have a recommendation to share with you uh, for the financial statement audit uh, that is in the form of a management letter. But again, as Courtney mentioned, this is not an audit finding and there, our opinion is not going to be modified. So uh, this is a less significant matter. You know, um, sorry? This is Emmett. I'm sorry. Could I, would you mind if I interjected here just briefly? Of course. As uh, previously planned, I need to take my leave for another call, but uh, you've already announced that this is a clean audit, uh, not just a clean audit from our perspective, but the 25th consecutive clean audit. I wish I could stay on this call, but I really felt compelled, to, I'm sorry, to interrupt and say thank you very much to uh, the uh, state auditors staff. Some of us have worked together for many, many years now. It's been a great relationship. I want to thank you for that. I also wanted the opportunity to commend our staff publicly Lori Fox and the folks, many, many, many other folks who work to support her. A fantastic achievement for a clean audit this year and, and the 25th in a row. So anyway, great partnership. I need to take my leave. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Emmett. Okay, so we'll continue on. Um, in addition, we noted no instances of non-compliance uh, during the course of our audit that we would be required to report on. For the federal awards, you'll see the results that are very similar to the financial audit. Again, we take a look at the internal controls or a process that transit staff go through to, um, to ensure those federal requirements are met. We reported no significant deficiencies in our federal grant uh, compliance audit. And in addition, we also issued another unmodified opinion on the transit's compliance with those requirements. In terms of what programs uh, were selected for audit for our federal uh, program audit, uh, we did take a look at the federal transit cluster. It is comprised of uh, four different uh, separate programs, if you will, that make an overall cluster. We did review uh, the transit's activity in all of those programs and uh, did express our opinion on that. Again, that was a clean audit. And 
At the end of the summary page, you'll see, again, we are issuing no financial statement findings and no federal findings or question cost. So that's a great place to kind of check for the summary of this report without having to read the entirety of it. But for your reference, I will, uh, I will walk you through the remainder of the report just so you understand um, how it's break, broken down and can refer to it uh, when you need to. So for the three sections, um, this is kind of organized in a in kind of a way like a sandwich, if you will. The first section is financial related, the middle is federal audit related, and we're gonna end with more financial related information. So our first section with this uh, long title here, Independent Auditors Report on Internal Control over Financial Reporting and on Compliance. Uh, this is the section where we're talking about the transit's financial statement process that you go through to prepare those statements and expressing whether or not we have any concerns that are significant uh, during our review of that process. So under the heading internal control over financial reporting, uh, you'll see that we've highlighted the key sentences for today's meeting. Uh, given the limitations that we do not look at every transaction reported on your financial statement audit, we do have to utilize a risk-based approach. Uh, we did not identify any deficiencies in internal control that we consider to be material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. Those would be large items that we would be required to report a finding on. Um, however, we do have one matter that we would like to bring to the transit board's attention in the form of a management letter. Uh, that's gonna follow our uh, presentation on this report and Courtney will be sharing that item with you. So stay tuned for just a minute and we'll get to that. Um, I mentioned we noted no issues on compliance during the course of our audit, and this is where you'll find that result in our report. Continuing on, we're going to go to the second portion, which is our report on compliance for each major federal program. So again, this is very similar. We're going to talk about, uh, it's going to start talking by management is responsible for ensuring compliance with the federal requirements. Our responsibility is to express an opinion on whether or not compliance was obtained. And then on page 17, you'll see the opinion that we are being, uh, we are issuing on the transit's compliance with the federal programs. And this is our, again, our unmodified or clean opinion. We found no significant issues of non-compliance with the federal grant. And then it does also have an internal control section, just like our financial statement audits. Um, it does talk a little bit about what internal control deficiencies are, but the key point is on page 18 where we did not identify any deficiencies in internal control. Again, a very clean audit. And then the third section of our report is where we're coming back to the financial statement results and we're issuing our opinion. So starting on page 19, you'll see that uh, again, we discuss management's responsibility again and the auditor's responsibility. Um, but on page 20 is where you'll see the opinion that is being issued. Again, this is a clean, unmodified opinion on the transit's fiscal year 2019 financial statements. <clears throat> now, audit standards also require that we emphasize certain matters in our report that could be uh, important for the reader to understand. Um, we are all very much aware that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, the pandemic uh, is very, uh, very much known that it could have a financial impact on our government agencies, um, whether or not in the transit case, um, you know, uh, cash, uh, cash receipts are being affected by less ridership on your transits or other um, impacts from funding on sales tax or other sources. Because the full effect of the uh, pandemic and its effect on the government is not known, um, in its entirety yet, um, audit standards do require that um, we look to see if the transit uh, identified that in your financial statements as a subsequent event, which is something that occurs after your year end or the 2019 year end. Um, and so we did see that the transit disclosed a subsequent event note disclosure in its financial statements. And our report is just, uh, is just referencing that note disclosure to bring it to the reader's attention. This is something very common that will be reported in many, if not all, financial statement audits this year. Um, so it's not anything uh, unusual for the transit. And then just closing out our financial statement opinion report, we have uh, a few paragraphs that mention additional supplementary information that the transit has prepared and what our audit procedures have been on that information. Our first paragraph is the required supplementary information. 
Uh, the transit is prepared under or is required under GAP to prepare some additional information, which includes the management discussion and analysis and certain required supplementary information schedules. Uh, we do take a look at that information um, as it's prepared in a in conjunction with our audit to make sure that it's not um, inconsistent with the remaining financial statements, but we're not issuing an opinion on that information. So really it's limited procedures just to make sure that it is consistent with the remainder of the financial report. And we uh, state that in that highlighted sentence that we are not expressing an opinion on that information. Um, in addition, when applicable, um, other supplemental in information might be required to be prepared. Um, in this case, because the transit does receive uh, a notable amount of federal expenditures. It is required to prepare what is called a schedule of expenditures of federal awards that details the expenditures uh, of those federal funds. Uh, we do audit that schedule. We do make sure that it is uh, prepared uh, correctly and that it is not misstated. Um, and in doing so, we are issuing an in relation opinion. And so you will see that highlighted sentence that uh, that information has been fairly stated, which was great to see. And closing out our financial statement audit report, we do include a listing of the financial statements that were prepared and submitted for audit. Um, this is uh, found on 20, page 23 of your packet. For purposes of our meeting today, we did not include the full set of financial statements in this packet as it would make this packet quite a bit longer. Um, but when this report is published, it will include that full set of financial statements that you're seeing listed here. And then similar to the financial statement uh, or the accountability report, you'll see that we do include a closing page about the state auditor's office should there be questions and uh, provide contact information if they would like to get in touch with us. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Courtney to share the, the management letter that is associated with the financial statement audit. All right, so you can see there that first page is, is really just a letter um, to the transit, but the actual uh, information itself about the, the issue that we identified is on the next page, um, on page 26. So um, in the prior audit, there was actually a management letter that was issued related to capital assets. Um, and that was specific to some um, special projects that were um, being performed and, and how those were be, being accounted for, excuse me. And so we did some follow-up procedures to just gain an understanding of kind of what what the transit had done. And we did note that there were some changes that were made to, to address the prior year recommendation. Um, but during our review this year, um, we gained an understanding of the process and we noted some, uh, some control weaknesses that um, really rose to the level of a management letter that were similar to the prior year recommendation as well. Um, so the transit, as you're all aware, has been um, involved in a lot of special projects, a lot of them having to do with the SWIFT line. And um, there's a lot of uh, other agencies that are also involved in that. The transit was, you know, in the process of uh, basically getting these projects together. And then once they were completed, the actual assets themselves, um, depending on where the, you know, the location and, and everything involved, but some of the assets were actually then uh, transferred to the uh, local jurisdiction jurisdictions that they were located within. And so there was a lot of there's a lot of details involved in, in how to make that determination of which assets were being transferred and how much and, and, and when really. And so during our review, we just noted that there was um, some weakness in that process of, of making that transfer uh, or those transfers to make sure that everything was transferred um, accurately and then communicated um, accurately and timely to make sure that everybody's financial statements were reporting those assets. Uh, in the same way. And so we did um, just want to point out and make that recommendation to make sure that, um, you know, when situations like this, or really when any capital assets, um, you know, are being handled, that the process that the transit has in place um, just really ensures that that information is being recorded uh, accurately. So um, you can see there was a couple other items in there as well involving land and making sure that, um, that land was being uh, capitalized appropriately um, in accordance with standards um, and some other items. But the majority of it really had to do with just making sure that um, those special projects were really being communicated and um, reported accurately um, for everybody involved. So that's our management letter. Um, so moving down, 
Hi, Courtney. Um, oh, mm -hmm. hi, Courtney. It's Lori Fox. Hi. I just wanted to jump in hey. and make sure everybody knows that we're already have taken a lot of steps to um, address these as well as just changing some of our processes overall. It was a complex project with the green line and we learned a lot uh, because the blue line, we didn't return any assets. We, we held all those assets. So it was actually a brand new type of project we really haven't encountered before, but we're working hard to address these already. So I just want to make sure people know that we're taking it seriously and we're working on it in finance. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. So then moving down to the next page on page 27, um, one of the other areas that Christina spoke of at the beginning um, was that we perform some additional procedures um, so that the transit can submit their comprehensive annual financial report package, um, otherwise known as the, the CAFR package, uh, to, for the, the award that they, they go for every year. And so um, we are pleased to report that we were able to review the information um, for those additional procedures that were performed. And so on page 27 and then moving really on to page um, 28 through I believe 30, um, that's the letter that we provide that basically says that we perform additional procedures. Um, it's a requirement in order to submit the CAFR for its award. And so this is actually included in the, the package that was submitted, I believe at the end of last month. Lori, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> All the CAFR awards are kind of blurring together right now. So. Um, that, that was correct. We had it in, the deadline was July 31st, July. so we okay. got it in. Perfect. Yes. So this is um, just really just, I'm not going to go through the individual items in there, but it's just uh, referring to the fact or referring to our financial report and basically stating that, um, again, we noted a clean opinion and we didn't have any concerns with the additional items that um, needed to be included um, in order for the CAFR uh, award to be submitted. So congratulations. And then I'm going to see if Ling, I, I mentioned to, or was speaking with Ling, it sounds like she can, she's yeah. here. Can, oh. can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can hear you now, Ling. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. I just had a hard time to, I don't know, I, the, the audio doesn't work properly for me, but so I call in. And now, uh, thanks, Courtney. So now I'm sharing with you the NTD attestation engagement results. Um, as you know, the FTA maintains the National Transit Database as the nation's source for information and statistics on the transit system in the United States. All transit agencies that receive FTA grant funding from certain formula grants are required to report to NTD. So for 2019, we conducted two different NTD-related engagements and issued two reports. So the first one, as you can see on screen, starting from page 31 through page 33, is our statement for federal funding uh, allocation data issued for the service non-real firm commuter bus um, for purchase transportation. It is also called as firm a form. FTA has established the standards for reviewing the data reported in the transit NTD report. And we reviewed S10 form by following the agreed upon procedures specifically requested by FTA and listed in the 2019 NTD policy menu. On the, uh, it, uh, yeah, on the bottom uh, page, on the bottom page 32, is the results of our reviewing the S10 form. So basically, we noted no exception in performing the grid pound procedures. Congratulations, this is a clean audit. And uh, the second NTD report, starting from page 34, yeah, this page, through page 37, is our statement for federal funding allocation data issued for each applicable mode and type of service the CP reported on the current NTD report. Again, we applied the procedure listed in 2019 NTD policy menu and we noted no exception when performing those agreed upon procedures. So let me explain a little bit here about the difference between these two engagements. Uh, both NTD attestation engagements are what we call regular or standard NTD reporting, which we perform every year. So the difference between them is the scope. NTD reporting is done through submission of different types of required forms. The first engagement is looking at only one of the forms called 
service non-rail as time form for the mode of commuter bus with the service type as purchased the transportation. And the second, uh, the larger engagement is looking at all applicable modes and type of service that CT reported on the NTV. So for fiscal year uh, 2019, it includes a total of 45 forms. In summary, both NTD-related engagements are performed by applying agreed-upon procedures specifically requested by FTA and listed in the 2019 uh, NTD policy manual. We noted no exception based on work performed. However, as this is an agreed-upon procedure engagement, so we don't provide opinion or conclusion in regards to your compliance with the specified requirements or on your internal control over compliance with specified question. So, but um, basically we noted no exception, you know, for both NTV reports. So, and next, uh, Christina is going to share additional information about this audit. Thank you, Lynn. All right, we're nearing the concluding portions of our presentation and we will open it up for questions momentarily. Um, on the screen in front of you, there are a few last pages that we wanted to bring to your attention before we get to our closing remarks. Um, you'll see in the packet that we have um, three separate what we call management representation letters. Um, for each audit that we conduct, audit standards do require that we obtain from management a signed representation letter, uh, essentially assuring us that the information that was provided during the course of the audit was true, um, and factual and there was no missing information or uh, that the audit auditors had um, open uh, availability to expect all associated records. Uh, we did receive those letters. Uh, there were no changes to the suggested representations and uh, each letter was signed for our audit. And so those are included in your packet as board members so that you can be aware um, of what the transit's representations were. I will scroll just quickly past those to our closing remarks. Um, in addition to the reports that we shared with you today, uh, there were a few recommendations that came out of our audit that are not going to be included in the audit reports. Uh, the first is the management letter. So Courtney did walk you through the management letter. Uh, management letters are referenced in our report, but the entirety of the recommendation is not included in our published report. Um, those are um, just referenced and they are a public record that is available through our, our, audit, uh, our audit report, um, but it will not be published on our website. Um, below the management letters, Courtney also walked you through the three levels of reporting. Uh, and so we do have what we call exit items. Exit items are likened to housekeeping items. They're very common to come up during the audit process as we encounter small items that we'd like to bring to management's attention for a possible correction. A lot of times these are best practice items as well. Uh, we did have a few exit items, uh, two to be exact. Uh, those were provided to management for their consideration and um, we did not include those in the packet as they are likened to management. Um, level type recommendations. If you have interest in those, please let us know and we'd be happy to provide those. Um, in terms of uh, following up on our prior management letter, uh, you'll see that we did uh, make mention to the fact that there was a management letter in the prior audit. Our normal audit process, whenever there is a management letter or finding, is to follow up on those uh, matters to determine if they are resolved. Uh, due to the fact that we continue to report a management letter this year, um, this item is marked as partially resolved. The, both management letters, the past and the current, uh, were regarding capital assets. So while they were slightly different issues, uh, they were some uh, related elements. So uh, we definitely did see some improvement, but with the current management letter, it is marked as partially. Um, we're also required uh, to make certain communications under audit standards to uh, management and the board um, in relation to our financial statement audit. And those would be whether or not our 2019 financial statement audit has any remaining uncorrected misstatements that remain uncorrected at the date of our report. Uh, there were some of these items. They are very small in nature. Uh, we have included at the last page a table listing out those items, but they do not affect the opinion being issued as they are deemed immaterial or small. Uh, so those are included so that you are aware they still exist in those final financial statements. 
Um, in addition, we're also required to let you know if there were any material or large misstatements in the audited financials. Um, as we've kind of uh, demonstrated through the audit results, uh, we are pleased to report that there were no material misstatements in the financial statements. Um, if there were, we would have um, more significant audit recommenda recommendations to share with you. And uh, moving forward and publishing the transits reports, we do expect to release the reports in the next uh, two uh, weeks or so. Um, so please, if you have not done so already and have interest, you can sign up at this link to receive uh, notifications when the transits reports are published. Um, you can also sign up to receive uh, notifications of other governmental reports if you have interest. And then um, we will also be sending out a customer service survey uh, once that uh, report is issued. Uh, we discussed the management representation letters and that were provided for your reference. And um, in addition, I am going to turn it over to Courtney for just a minute. I have a, a dog in my room that's about to bark. Courtney, can you take over this audit cost? Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we uh, when we were uh, calculating the audit costs, we um, initially submitted the engagement letter with just one uh, uh, federal compliance audit, um, but included in the engagement letter, it does speak to the fact that if there is um, need for a second uh, federal compliance audit that there um, was a budget included in there. So you can see in there that we did include a little bit more explanation, um, just talking to the fact that we did need to perform um, a second federal compliance audit, which um, we did complete and we didn't have any concerns with that and actually kind of merged into to one because um, it's all under the same umbrella. Um, but we are um, pleased to report too, we did come in a little bit under in transit or excuse me, travel because we didn't have to go out to the, tr the transit itself. So um, we didn't note that, but the budget is um, within our, our original budget and um, actually a little bit under um, overall. So, so there you go. Um, and then speaking to going, just moving on to our next scheduled audit, we do have the um, next audit as an accountability financial, um, including uh, the comprehensive annual financial report uh, review, as well as um, our federal review, and, and again, a review of the um, NTD report. Um, so we do have our estimated budget there for budgeting purposes. Um, this is um, based on our current rate. So if that changes, we will uh, make sure to let you know um, before or as soon as that happens. We don't anticipate that um, at this point. Um, so just for budgeting purposes, you do have that there available. Um, just continuing to move on um, the audit survey. Um, we will be uh, providing an audit survey um, at the conclusion of the audit. We do appreciate any feedback, um, good or bad, that can help uh, improve the audit process. Anything that we're doing well, we want to keep doing, but anything that we can um, work on, we also want that information as well so we can improve that. And then um, just to kind of wrap up, we do have some other local government um, support teams within our office that do provide some um, helpful tools. Um, that's a, a free service. Um, we have the local government support team that really does that help desk. Um, if you have any questions year round, um, it's a free service, it's really great to use. And then we have the Center of Government Innovation that provides a lot of trainings and other helpful um, information. Um, again, there's some contact information if you are interested in working with them. Um, and then also our contact information just for those that were um, significantly involved in the team is, is there if there are any questions um, now or uh, year round that is also available. Um, and then the very last item on this page or on this document is um, just a list of uh, uncorrected misstatements. Um, I think Christine already mentioned the fact that this is a pretty standard practice that there are some minor items that um, the time it would take to correct those items just doesn't make sense and we're in agreement that it doesn't affect your opinion. So um, we just include a list in there as we're required to and so that's uh, what you see there. Um, are there any questions from um, anybody within the board or within the transit um, going through this document that we can answer for you? Courtney, Mike Todd here may have the floor. Hello. Yeah, thanks. So I just want to, no questions. Thank you very much for the complete report. I just want to say thanks to you and the rest of the SAO's office staff who helped out with this. 
and Lori, I know we had a, we had some tense uh, after hours and over weekends discussions right in the middle with getting ready for the making that submission to the general uh, the GFOA award. We really appreciate you guys clearing your schedule and helping us out with the with the timing of these overlapping uh, audits that made it kind of difficult. But everybody did a really good job, and I appreciate that. I know Lori uh, got a few gray hairs over that. She was trying to give me some too, but you guys helped level our level us out and make sure this is going to be okay. So I appreciate that on behalf of the agency and our staff, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate everybody um, within the transit. We already mentioned it, but this has been an, a challenging audit just with uh, everything happening right now. And so it was really great to work with everybody to, to figure out and brainstorm how we can get all the information to each other and get everything done um, to meet all the deadlines. So we do appreciate that. This is Jan Schwede from the board. And can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually just have a curiosity question. As you went through the audit process under COVID, did you find that there were any of those activities that actually worked better that you might like to keep when we get back to normal? Uh, potentially. Um, you know, I don't, I think it's going to be a matter of how the challenge on the transit end to provide the information um, because you know we you know we requested the information that we needed the same way that we would normally do in an audit um, but we've kind of found with each audit we have to cater how that information can be provided to us so there were a couple of instances where we did actually go on site to the transit for um, i know i went on site for a day and i believe a couple um, other people i think ling went on site for a day also to review some documents because it just really didn't make sense to try to scan all that information mm -hmm. Um, so, but for a lot of the other areas, it was, um, the, the transit was able to provide that information electronically. And so, um, you know, we are certainly open to continuing those practices if it's, if it's feasible and if it's something that's easy for the transit to provide, um, because obviously that saves in travel costs, um, that we certainly don't want to have to charge if we don't need to. So, you know, I think we're learning a lot over, um, the course of this last year, um, just kind of learning how to work around these challenges and if there are ways that we can continue to work remotely um, you know even when things do get back to normal we certainly are, are open to it if it if it's going to save costs um, to the transit so so yeah okay thank you mm -hmm. are there any other questions that i can answer Okay, this is Christina. I just want to apologize for that um, interruption. Um, we really just want to extend our appreciation to, again, everybody that took time out of your day to uh, listen to our presentation um, and uh, hear the draft results. We certainly appreciated um, all of the staff's efforts at the transit, and we have a really great working relationship with you. So we do hope that this uh, presentation was uh, informative to you. Um, and if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're always open and accessible to you. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.